Hello students, my name is Chaitanya, Physics Faculty at Shri Shakti International School. In this video, we are going to learn about an important topic from Semiconductors, a chapter from class 12th. Okay, now in this video, we will try to understand what are the semiconductors and types of them. Okay, now a semiconductor is a device which has conductivity between insulator and conductor okay the conductivity of it will be between a conductor and a semiconductor okay that means it is neither a good conductor nor a bad conductor okay we can change the main reason why we are using the semiconductors is first thing we can control the direction of current and second thing we can control amount of current also amount of current as well so these are the two reasons why we are using semiconductors now these semiconductors this semiconductor at absolute zero absolute temperature absolute temperature that means at zero degrees kelvin they will act as perfect insulators insulators okay if they are brought to a room temperature then okay then they will be acting as conductors if they are increased temperature is increased more then they will act as good conductors instead of increasing the temperature we can dope the temperature also we can dope the semiconductor another way of increasing conductivity is doping okay doping is a process of adding impurities intentionally intentionally okay so that the conductivity of the semiconductor increases okay now in this semiconductors we are having two types the concept of current is different in semiconductors the semiconductors has holes and electrons okay semiconductors they have holes and they have electrons okay now these holes and electrons because of this you will have a hole current because of these electrons you will have a electron current so the total current that is flowing in a semiconductor will be equal to sum of electron current plus hole current the concept of current and the intrinsic charge carriers the charge carriers is different from a regular conductor because in a regular conductor we don't have a concept of holes but in a semiconductor we have a concept of holes okay that you will be understanding when you are understanding the band theory now since we are trying to understand conductors types of conductors semiconductors are of two types one is an intrinsic intrinsic semiconductor and two it is extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductors are nothing but pure semiconductor pure semiconductor extrinsic are impure semiconductor impure semiconductors so now pure semiconductors some examples of it are silicon germanium we are going to analyze these two in this chapter extrinsic if the silicon is made impure by adding some kind of trivalent we can add a trivalent impurity and we can add to a silicon we can add a pentavalent impurity pentavalent impurity if you are adding a trivalent impurity it will become 
P type semiconductor and if you are adding a pentavalent impurity it will become N type semiconductor. In N type semiconductor electrons are majority charge carriers majority charge carriers and in P type holes are majority charge carriers majority charge carriers let us understand what is happening in the pure semiconductor let's say we are taking silicon the electronic configuration of silicon if you are writing atomic number is 14 that means you can write it as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p2 so that means in the lost orbit we are having okay if you are writing it in terms of this thing we are having four vacant Electro, uh, states. Now that means each silicon atom will perform four covalent bonds in a crystal shape with the remaining four silicon atoms. So now this is how a structure of silicon crystals will be. So all these are going to be in a covalent bond with the neighboring silicon atoms. Neighboring silicon atoms now this is a pure semiconductor okay this is a pure semiconductor now in this pure semiconductor with this pure semiconductor if you are increasing the temperature okay in a at 0 degree Kelvin the covalent bonds are very sturdy they will not break and they will act as perfect insulators because no free electrons are available. Let's say if temperature is increased, then covalent bonds break. Covalent bonds break. So when the covalent bonds are breaking, electrons are going to come out of it. When the electrons are coming out, they will leave a hole as a gap. Now if you are uh, uh, applying an external electric field, electron will go opposite to the direction of electric field and holes will go in the direction of electric field giving you an electron current and a hole current. This is the direction of electron. That means electron current will be in this direction. This is the direction of holes. Okay. This is the direction of hole current. So the total current will be equal to IE plus IH. Okay. So this is what happens in a pure semiconductor. Now in an impure semiconductor that is P type and N type. Okay. Now, those silicon atoms will be replaced by trivalent impurity, trivalent impurity like and pentavalent impurity. Pentavalent impurity example is phosphorus, trivalent impurity example is aluminum. So, that means instead of a silicon atom, aluminum will be coming in. So, when aluminum is coming in, the electronic configuration, since the atomic number is 13, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1 and phosphorus since the atomic number is 15 configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Now since we are fusing with aluminium, aluminium will bring only 3 of its electrons and the silicon atoms will perform, 3 silicon atoms will perform 3 covalent bonds with aluminium atom. So there is a, another vacant place position which is left because of less number of electrons in aluminum. Now that means there is a whole vacancies of electron is what we are calling it as whole. So now when we are calculatingly adding the uh, amount of doping quantity okay so for every particular number of silicon atoms we are adding one aluminum atom. So this will bring more number of holes into it so what will happen in this holes are already majority holes are in majority so now these holes holes are in majority numbers so these holes will conduct elect, uh, electricity obviously and electrons also uh, uh, will be uh, conducting but the electrons are less holes are more in this electrons will be less now, if you are adding a phosphorus, so this phosphorus will bring 5 of its electrons because it is having 5 valence electrons. So, all the 4 electrons will be forming with 
forming covalent bonds with the neighboring four silicon atoms but there will be an extra one silicon atom which is uh, one uh, electron of phosphorus which is out now this electron if you are giving slight amount of energy it will be conducting it will be going into the valence band and it will be starting to conduct ele uh, current electricity so in this condition since there is an extra electron already each and every uh, uh, impure atom we are adding will bring an extra electron here electrons are in majority and holes are minority okay so this is what the types of semiconductors we have okay so basically impure semiconductors are of two types p type and n type p type means pentavalent in penta uh, p type means trivalent impurity is added that means majority will be holes minority will be electrons in the same way n type majority will be electrons minority will be holes i hope you understood the types of semiconductors okay just briefing of it we'll meet in the next video thank you